Right, uh, Lorenza, uh, Roy, it's a, um, um, it's, it's a pleasure to speak to you both. Thank you ever so much for your time. Very grateful. Um, so, Confess Fletch, it's uh, a lot of fun to watch. I really enjoyed it. Was it as much fun to make? Because it strikes me as the sort of film that, um, Roy, especially with your background in comedy, that you're going to be making one another laugh uh, throughout. It was it was fun. It was very fun to make. What it was also fun to do was be a part of something that the when you look at it being a remake and when you look at what Chevy Chase did with this back in the 80s, watching it all come together in front of you. And it was very difficult for me as a performer, especially with John Hamm on, on, in the same room with you to yeah. not kick back and just watch the movie and then remember, oh, wait. We're making the, it's my turn to talk. Okay, what were my lines? <laughs> Too late. Cut. Roy screwed up the take. <laughs> really? I, yeah, actually, that's, that's a fair point. John, John has a tremendous uh, comedic capacity to kind of take, he would, you know what, the same thing happened to me. He would kind of take me out of the thing and be like, oh, wait, oh, okay. I have to come, come at him right now. There was. There was a lot of times where I'd just be like transfixed by watching his very raw, dry delivery and be like, is he, is he messing with me right now? Or like, <laughs> is this real? Does he like me? Does he not like me? He has like a real capacity to to do that. I had a lot of fun though. I I, I had the freedom of doing a, a kind of out there character. <laughs> and when, mm -hmm. when I get to do those, it allows me to kind of be way more playful than I, that, than I usually would be. Um, and it's, it's it's a risky, scary thing, but uh, that that usually works in my favor in terms of enjoyment in filming. <laughs> so, Lorenza, I know, um, as I said, we've, we've spoken before, and I know that you have quite a cosmopolitan heritage yourself, um, but your Italian accent in this is, is absolutely spot on. Um, can you tell me about how much work you put into that? <laughs> Thank you for that. I am always terrified to do accents because I feel like, no, you know, you can't win them all. <laughs> There all there will always be that person that's like oh yeah that wasn't that that wasn't great accents are a fascinating thing to to tackle I was very lucky to work with an Italian um, professional with a with a, an accent coach uh, this this really incredible Daniela um, Roman lady that I, I work with for from the second I got the role and I. I didn't, I wanted to be, I wanted it to be a little bit out there, but never crossing the line because you never want to be the pizza boy because I've done Italian roles before and you want to be respectful and you want to do it justice. And it's not a very easy, like I could never do a British accent. That's just something I'm never going to do. I will just embarrass myself so hardcore. <laughs> Italian, I have a little bit of leeway. My grandfather is Italian. I, I, I can, I can, you know, I can juggle that and I can, if I work my ass off on it, I can, I can get to a place. So I really appreciate you um, liking it. And it, I think for me in this case, it just kind of shaped Angela. The second I, I grabbed um, how long she had lived in Rome for, where like, like how much she had traveled, I could gauge sort of what her, her cadence and her tone and her projection of voice would be. And that kind of informed who Andy was to me. Well, whilst we're just as an aside with you, Roy, I was watching your stand up and I, I, yes, I with my wild Alabama accent that I had to suppress. <laughs> well, yeah, I had to do the opposite. I had to hide my accent. <laughs> well, where I'm going with this is that um, you're still getting to grips with Idris Elba being British. Yeah, you know that. Wait, was, what? <laughs> that it's always this thing in in Black Hollywood where popular black actors you'll find out they're british after you fall in love with them which is fine but it's always just like a quick little shock of like oh like like when you, you ever the second you hear them it's like when voice. you sip you think you're about to sip tea then you find out it's coffee you're like oh 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 okay oh this is different <laughs> so it's all yeah it's always a surprise yeah i talked about that in my last special like it's just always a thing <laughs> So um, the other thing I was going to ask you, Roy, is that whilst uh, Lorenzo had to compete with getting her accent spot on, one of the things that said it theatrically is never work with uh, children, never work with animals. You've got a scene where you've got a baby clamped to you. So just how much uh, vomit <laughs> and <laughs> screaming did you have to put up with? Here's the wild thing about the scene with the baby. That was the first day of shooting for me and John Hamm. 
Well, for it's the first day for me with John, first day on set, and like <laughs> as an actor, you're breaking down the script. And you know what the tougher uh, this scene, this is, I need to make sure I'm doing the right emotions with this scene. God, I hope that baby scene is in a couple weeks. I'm not ready to do. Hey, Roy, first day, here's your baby. They give you a fake baby to rehearse with. And then when it's time to actually shoot, a real baby comes in and they bring it in like a championship trophy. It's in a case. It's all, it's, well, it's not really in a case, but it's, it's being handled very delicately. Um, the thing that I forgot, and I'm a father, and I just didn't think about this with my own son. Babies generate a level of heat that I never imagined. When you're just sitting still and a living being is lying on your, and it's just heat. But thankfully, the child it's like is like nervous cool. heat. Yeah. And so between takes, I just didn't move because the baby was chilling. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just keep chilling right here, baby. There's no wait reason. a second, but I heard you were like a baby whisperer on set, though. I heard that like you had oh, yeah, him baby on loved luck. Me. Yeah, the baby, the baby loved, loved you and was like passed out immediately, like giggling and drooling on my chest. Which to is hard. That's up. not the usual, mind you. Like all the baby scenes I've ever done, I've done a bunch of them. I'm always like the baby screaming, and I feel so bad because the mother's around, and you're like, this is this is not okay. Someone <laughs> should come and me. Some union should tell me that I'm not doing the right thing. You killed it. No, I could have kidnapped that baby, and that baby would have been content with its new home, with this new parent. That Think baby loves. We better stop that bit. There. <laughs> I could have kidnapped that baby. Kidnapping two babies. <laughs> that could be. A I could have forfeited anyway. my acting career and walked off with <laughs> that baby. It would have been perfectly fine. Well, look, let's go on to other things. Um, the locations that you're shooting. So, um, Lorenzo, you get the you get Rome, beautiful Rome to film in, and mm -hmm. Roy, you get maybe the not quite so beautiful Boston to shoot in. So mm -hmm. who got the better deal here? Ooh. Well, that's a question for Lorenzo. What was it like during COVID over there? Like in terms of just being able to move around as a tourist? Because Italy was pretty strict as far as- Well, I when I got, I actually got both. I got to shoot in Boston. And interestingly enough, your first day was with the baby. My first day was naked with John Hamm. <laughs> so we had like similar, like, I was like- I was just dive right in down this script and you're like oh i hope this scene that's like us full on doing it is like a couple of weeks later that we get a few days so we can get and they're like oh yeah. here's your schedule first day um it's the sex scene and i'm like okay great and well it ended up i actually kind of preferred because like there's just you just start with that so then for the rest of the shoot you're kind of like we did that and we we got through it and it was actually really fun um and awkward and uncomfortable like they always are and from there like that we shot boston for italy we, we shot the interior of andy's apartment um in boston and that was really fun i actually loved boston and then when we got to go to rome that was awful that was like the truest like darkest moment of my life going to rome <laughs> i'm just kidding it was <laughs> incredible there was no covid <laughs> The COVID regulations were not strict by the time we got there. And I just enjoyed it so much. To me, it was it was a dream come true. I've always wanted to shoot a film in, in Rome. I mean, like, it's just, it's ridiculous. We were doing scenes in front of the Colosseum, in front of the ruins. I, I had a whole scene by the Fontana di Trevi, which is one of my favorite places in all of Rome. And we were sipping like Aperol spritzes between takes. And it was beautiful and hot <laughs> and incredibly charming and stunning and yeah, it, it sucked. It, it's it tough awesome. filming. Yeah. That sounded like a tough show. Boston shoot. was a good time. It was great food. <laughs> I, but I had my family with me. So, you know. Yeah, you did. My, my, you know, so my son, you know, he was like four, maybe five at the time. So we did like little touristy museum stuff and aquariums. But for the most part, Boston still, there was a, still a little bit of the COVID-ness COVID mm. of it all. So mm -hmm. I was also trying to minimize where I went and what I did. Owner, like it had to be open big space type stuff because I also didn't want to like catch COVID and then they go, hey, you're off the movie. That was that was my biggest fear. If you want to know oh. the truth, my biggest fear was catching COVID too early into taping and then being replaced. It's just you, you come on set one day and you Anthony were Anderson's in your trailer and it's like <laughs> that's it. Sorry, boss. He was in The Departed. He already knows Boston as a cop. You got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so um the the film uh, uh centers on uh, a lot of high art 
So you've got Picasso in there, you've mm-hmm. got just by Paul Clay, uh, Gustav Klint, um, or Edvard Munch rather, uh, as well as Gustav Klint, sorry. Um, did you, and some of these were genuine pictures, I understand. So how did you feel sort of working around them or have I got that wrong? They were all, you know, from the art department. Yep, I <laughs> I can't confirm or deny, but I'm pretty sure those are really good impressions. Yeah, the home that we shot in, the murder where the where the where Fletch finds the woman at the beginning of the the movie, there was a lot of art in that place mm-hmm. that was real. It was very. Now, real. I don't know what was props versus what was legit on camera, but that was an actual active person's home. Mm-hmm. who loves art so like there was not a lot of set deck to be done other than maybe swapping a picture or two just because of you know some legal rights and stuff so it was it, i'm nervous around expensive stuff you know not really my thing i walk slow move slow <laughs> you know that's not really my thing i remember for the daily show we shot a segment where we had to be inside a ferrari didn't really like it it you don't want to be the guy that scratches it. Yeah, I don't want to be the guy that scratches the Ferrari or, you know, knowing me, I'll fart and that changes the humidity in the room, which affects the canvas. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. <for> uh... <laughs> so <laughs> finally, then, just to draw it to a close, um, it's such a fun film to watch. Uh, there's a lot of Fletch books. Um, uh, are we looking at a sequel, maybe? Will you be involved? I would love to, you know, if they ever decide to green light something, let me know. I'm right here. You see where I'm at, man. I'm in an office with with old baseball trophies from high school in the background. (laughs) I'm available. By the way, me too. Right here. I I can do, I I can change accents. You know, Andy could be a Russian spy. You never know. There's a lot happening there. She could be anything. Well, yeah, I, I think I think the thing that was really dope was that, you know, the film was so well received by critics and fans. And I think at the end of the day, I think they're the people who decide whether or not there's a sequel, you know, it's the fans. And so, you know, I think everybody will enjoy this film and, you know, we'll, we'll try and come back around and do another one. <laughs> Lorenza, uh, Roy, thank you ever so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you both. Thank you. Absolutely.